It's Tuesday morning. I'm Father Stephen St. Bridges Hermitage, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the sixth day of October 2020, and our readings today come from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, Psalms 139, and also the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 13 through 24. Uh, folks, I hope you'll take a little time today to read those passages for yourself. Today, I'm going to try and draw my reflections from both the book of Galatians and also the Psalms. I'd like to try and give you a, uh, a deeper meaning, a little better reflection on the passages today. Uh, let's hope I accomplish that. Well, folks, have you ever felt embarrassed, depressed, uh, a little guilty of past sins, things you've done? Maybe you're mortified about one sin that you you think that nobody could nobody could forgive you, nobody would understand. Uh, start thinking even the Lord can't understand this one. No way He can forgive forgive me for this. Well, sometimes that those those thoughts keep us away from coming to the Lord, especially before we become Christians, and even after we become followers. Sometimes those thoughts can keep us uh, from coming back to the Lord. Maybe we're just stuck in the mud with this one. Well, we read in today's passage, uh, verse 13 of, of uh, Galatians, St. Paul writes, For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. Paul's not giving himself any slack here. He's, he's admitting his, his faults and his sins right up front. Uh, and anybody who is taking a little time to read the passages understand that Paul was one of the greatest persecutors of the church. Uh, Paul was there when St. Stephen was, was martyred. Uh, so Paul... Paul has his reasons for, for having uh, his conviction of his sins. Uh, but you know, those convictions can either be good or bad. And if they convict you to come to the Lord, they're a great thing. If they convict you and, and they persecute you in your own mind to stay away from the Lord, they've gotten out of hand. Well, folks, the good news is, you can't do anything that the Lord won't forgive you for. Uh, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, your sins can't uh, outweigh the forgiveness the Lord can give to you. Uh, you know, Scripture does tell us in, in Romans, the uh, third chapter, that you know we've all sinned. And in the sixth chapter of Romans, it says we're all deserving of eternal separation. Uh, we all deserve to be punished for, for all the things we've done. Uh, it's an all or nothing scenario, folks. Uh, God's not going to judge us on if our good outweighed our bad. Uh, God judges, doesn't judge us on a scale. There's no, there's no uh, pass on this one. Uh, God's going to forgive us solely based on our relationship with Christ. Did we come to Christ? Um, as an Orthodox friend of mine uh, likes, to, likes to say, when it comes to God, we're either going to rely on his mercy or his judgment. And I don't know about you folks, but I'm going to rely heavily on his mercy. Uh, I don't think I really want God's judgment on me. Uh, but we have a merciful God. The Father is, is, is merciful, and, and if he could forgive uh, and use St. Paul, uh, he can forgive and use you in his, in his service. Uh, we read in St. John, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God made it a way for us to be saved. 
And it was a really easy way. Uh, it's easy to get in the door. The walk and the journey is going to be a little tough. He never said it was going to be easy. Uh, but even made provisions for that. He's given us his grace, his love. Uh, he's given us the Holy Spirit uh, to help us through uh, our, daily, our daily lives. Uh, so folks, I, I use this out of my personal ministry because I've run into some folks who really believe this, that God can't forgive them. And God can. God really can forgive you. If you come to him in honesty, sincerity, um, and you believe in the faith, you believe that Christ was, was raised from the dead, uh, God can forgive you. We read in Psalms 139, and this is, this is a beautiful passage. My bones are not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, fashioned in the depth of the earth, your eyes saw me unformed, and you look, and your book are all written down. My days were shaped before one came to be. Meaning the Lord saw you when you were still in your mother's womb. The Lord saw you as you were being formed. And better yet, the Lord had a plan for you. The Lord has a plan for you today that he had a plan for you when you were born. Folks, it's a great thing that our Lord is so interested in you uh, that he cares for you in the womb. And some folks say, well, yeah, but I've gotten way off track. I, I, that doesn't count anymore. Yes, it does. God doesn't change. God's plan for you doesn't change just because you screwed something up. You know, my mom likes to tell a story about uh, my birth. 1962, small little child. I was three pounds and some ounces. Uh, you know, back then, uh, really not expected to live. Uh, my folks, you know, they prayed for me, my family prayed for me, and well, here I am. And God had a plan for that little tiny child. And through years of, of my own willfulness and, and disobedience uh, and running from the Lord, uh, I never thought he'd forgive me. But he did. It's taken over 50 years to uh, fall into line with, with what God had planned for me. Folks, sometimes life just happens. Sometimes we get off track, but the Lord has a plan for you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to love you. He wants the best for you. He wants you to be the best version you can be. Uh, we read in, in our passage today from Galatians 22 and 24, and I went to Syria, to Sicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ, and they only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy, and they praised God because of me. You see, Paul turned his life around. Yeah, and I know you're thinking, well, Paul's conversion was something special. It was uh, direct intervention, intervention of God. And it was spectacular, no doubt about it. But I'm here to tell you that God intervenes today. No, maybe not as spectacular. Not that he couldn't. But he does not intervene in lives, lives today. Uh, and God wants to intervene in your life. God wants you to be the best person you can be. He wants, he wants you to be his child. Uh, there are a thousand examples of men and women uh, who had wicked, shameful lives. Um, 
they'd gone on to serve the Lord in great and mighty ways. Uh, so never think you're too far off from, from the Lord uh, to be of service to him. God has his love and his mercy, and, and he'll, as he changes lives around, if you let him. Uh, you know, we read of the great St. Augustine of Hippo, who led a, a life of, of immorality and addictions. You know, God used him, and he became a, a, a saint of the church, a doctor of the church. Uh, you know, and you might say, well, Father, that was, that was back then. Well, we have modern examples. We read of, of Nicky Cruz, who was one of New York's uh, gang leaders, who became a great evangelist. Uh, one of my, my favorite uh, stories of, is of uh, Johnny Lee Clary, the imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, who went on to become an elder for a predominantly uh, African-American domination. The, uh, Church of God in Christ. There was Michael Franzi, who was the former head of the uh, Colombo crime family, who went on to become a, a traveling evangelist for the Lord. There are thousands of examples. So don't think you're far from the Lord. And if you're a follower and you've, you've, you've fallen down, You've, you've dropped your cross. Maybe it's been so bad you just lost your cross. The Lord's still there waiting for you. The Lord didn't walk off without you. He's standing next to you just waiting for you to get a grip on your life, to call him again. Uh, take up your cross. The Lord will forgive you. The Lord has plans. Uh, because... The Lord doesn't judge us on, on our own abilities. He's not, we're, he's not counting on us to save ourselves. He's just counting on us to call on him, to be, sa to, to be saved through the, our Lord Jesus Christ. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 21, For your sake, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. And in Jeremiah we read, uh, chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have made for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and hope. And lastly, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. You see, folks, Scripture is... is, is it's plain and clear. God wants you to be saved. And God has a plan. No matter where you are in your walk, or maybe you haven't even started your walk, come to the Lord. If you're a fallen away Christian, come back to the Lord. Take up your cross. The Lord's just waiting. The Lord's wanting you to be the best version you can be. He's wanting you to have all the joy and love and the peace he can give to you. So folks, those are my reflections today. I hope I tied the two passages in. Uh, wishing you all the best today. All the blessings the Lord has in store for you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again.